In this three-part series, we're going to start putting down some ideas and sounds for a techno track, making use of some of the free Max for Live plugins available from Point Blank. Over the past couple of years, we've released a suite of Max for Live devices, ranging from audio effects to visual synthesizers. So at the start of any project, often begin just by getting together different sounds and jamming around to get a vibe going. It might be an overall concept, or it might be just a case of seeing what comes out. So we're going to start by creating a basic set of drum sounds using the kick drum designer. So although it was designed to create kick drums, we can actually create a whole range of other drum sounds as well. You can learn more about the kick drum designer and all the other plugins by checking out the videos on YouTube, and there's also a download link as well. We cover many of these sound design techniques in the Ableton sound design course at Point Blank using the default Ableton synth. This video has been edited down from a longer demonstration, so you may see additional sounds I created but are not covered in these videos. So I've got all the plugins downloaded to one folder for easy access here and what I'm also going to do is I'm going to set up an audio track so one of the ways I like to work is just jam around with sounds and record the result to an actual audio track so where it says audio from we need to see your I/O options here okay let's choose kick drum designer and that basically allows me to quickly record onto this track here so let's just rename this kicks and if I just create standard four to the floor beat, then switch back to the kick drum designer. So what I'm going to do is create a range of different kicks and can then either record these kicks directly into a clip or as I've got this record enabled, if I just click on record here, let's play around with this a bit. This is actually be recording straight into The arrange page. And you get such a huge range of sounds just by adjusting these different envelopes in different ways. So this is all just from the pitch envelope. You can hear how that adds the transient onto the sound. Right, let's press stop and then jump over to the arrange page and you can now see that I've recorded all these different kicks in as audio. Let's just zoom in here. So if you like one, just select over it and Command E to split. So I've listened through the whole recording and then just edited out any kick drums which I thought sounded okay. If you're going to use the kick drums as audio files, then you'll just need to view fades. Ableton defaults to including a fade up and fade down. And what you'll find is if you don't adjust this manually or in your preferences, Okay, you can hear it's slightly duller. Um, you will lose the kind of initial part of the transient, which is not what you want to do. What I'm going to do, however, I'm going to just drop in a drum rack onto this MIDI track and just select an octave below. I just want to check them out as I might not use them all. So I've now loaded it onto all of these. What I've also done is cropped the sample as well. So just right click, crop sample. And they're now edited up. Right, so what we're going to do now is come back to the kick drum designer and now try and create some form of snare sound. So to do this I'm going to use sine and noise. We get sine wave and a bit of noise. I'm also going to tighten up this amp envelope here. Hold down shift and click on that node to get rid of it. To create a curve you hold down alt key. Just put the frequency really low, so you can't actually hear that. Now, on a snare, we might want a kind of fundamental of around kind of 200, 100, if you want to kind of do an 808 type of sound. Or what we can actually do is create a frequency, a low frequency, and then filter it in some way.
what we'll do is we can set it up and record onto this track again and then we can kind of tweak if necessary and do some more processing on that as it's not particularly designed for a snare drum but it's going to do the job so let's just rename that snares uh, click on record and away we go And it might be, we can actually use this for hi-hats as well. If I turn the high range right down. There we go, let's press stop. Okay, so now we've got a range of snares and hats. So what I'm going to do is just edit these up and then we'll also drop them into the drum rack. Before I do that, just looking at the waveform here, we can see we've got some uh, pretty low frequencies in here. So what I'm just going to do stick on an EQ and then roll off the bottom end. Let's draw this bit lower. Okay, and then just going to freeze and flatten. Now they're looking a bit more normal. Uh, so now just going to listen through to these different sounds and separate them out. So I've got different snare sounds there. And then kind of closed hat and then more open hat. I'm also thinking of using these two kicks. So if I just hold down the Alt key here, I can drop that one there, click back, and again, hold down the Alt key, and then drop that one there. Okay, so let's now program in a quick beat. So I'm just gonna double click there to create a clip. So let's just double those up. Play. Go for the echo eight sounding snare. Might be good to just kind of change the sound of that snare as well. Let's just quickly work on that. So here's the snare. So if we drop in an EQ. Just want to roll off the top slightly, roll off the bottom as well. It's just made from white noise, so it's kind of full bandwidth. And then just boost around mid range, give it a crack. I'm just going to add a little bit of reverb on the end of it. Bring the dry wet down. Also tighten up that stereo width. Then just want to add some hats in. Kind of an eight pattern like this. Right, we could actually try tightening this hat right up. So sustain right down and then just reduce the decay. Again, at the moment these hat sounds are full bandwidth. Okay, so what probably a good idea to do is just make use of a high pass filter brilliant and let's go and find the other one and use a high pass filter on it sometimes you can get a brighter sound out of these just by transposing them you get slightly different uh, frequency content 
pan it slightly. I'm gonna drop that down a bit more. Let's just add a little bit of swing quantize. Go for a 16 swing. Do you know what? I'm going to um, transpose this up. Let's go for a kind of clickier sound. Let's push this one off as well. Okay, sometimes when you do that, you might need to put an EQ. Uh, on the back end of it, let's uh, come here and just roll off right at the top end because it uh, pushes all the frequency content up, and sometimes you can feel it on your ears <laughs> when you transpose it. Yeah, there's a the clicker. So I was just playing around with the snare again and. I really just shortened it right down. I kind of quite like that. Almost like a kind of pop of air. It's quite subtle, really. So that's our basic beat. In the next video, we'll be getting a bass line down and adding some percussive synth sounds.